it's Kari. And we're going to go over uh, milk paint. I'm going to show you a technique with milk paint. I find it kind of interesting because milk paint is interesting. And um, it's just kind of a good thing to practice with um, and learn how you can work with milk paint. So I'm going to set the stage for you right now. We got this table. It was a pine table. My client got it at a consignment shop, super, super cheap, which is why it's worth it to refinish it, as well as these chairs, because you pay $20 for the chairs. But we're not paying it for $20. So we decided to do the two chairs, kind of a perfect uh, technique, just simple and clean in um, a almost gray color. The top of the table is gonna go white, and we're in the process of that, and then we're gonna do the legs. And I started off the legs with um, an old violet color from Annie Salon Chalk Paint. So old violet on the legs, that's gonna be the beginning step. And then here is a finish I did with the milk paint. Now, the one thing about milk paint, it's kind of, a, it's not a science. It's kind of like milk paint wants to do its own thing. It's gonna flake off where it wants to flake off and it's gonna stick where it wants to stick. That's why it's just kind of fun to play with it and see what happens. So here, a lot of flaking happened and I can't guarantee that that's gonna happen down on the legs, but this is a really pretty finish and it'll look you know, interesting with the table legs, with the table clean and the legs distressed and the chairs clean and then she's gonna do some really vibrant um, flower pattern. So all you'll need to do is follow the instructions to the milk paint, I think. You get milk paint, you get, um, who is it? Oh my gosh, what's her name? Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint, they're all the same. You mix it with water and then you get this kind of thick, creamy kind of consistency. And see how dark it is? And then it's gonna turn, actually turn that color. So it's kind of crazy. So um, mix up your, you can paint whatever base coat you want on and then mix up your Okay, now we'll get started. Okay, so you can translate your colors into any colors that you'd like. We, this is what we chose. I think this is called uh, Driftwood. Driftwood, milk paint over Annie Salone Old Violet. And I don't know if a lot of people know this about um, milk paint, but when you put it on, we're just gonna put it on. <laughs> You're just gonna put it on. And then I'm gonna do something um, with it because it's kind of cool. Uh, it really hardens. It's like, it's almost like a plaster. I take a little small spatula and I'm just gonna kind of compress it on and then let it kind of do its thing. It's a little more awkward on these um, columns, but you're not, you don't have to make this stressful. Just kind of, this is, this is art. This is where you get to play. So you kind of let it sit up, you get it on, and you're not putting it on perfectly because it's meant to be a distressed peekaboo color. I kind of stipple, you know, like I said, if it's gonna wanna shed off, it's gonna shed off on its own own. Kinda has a mind of its own, a little stubborn child in a sense. Then I'll wait a few minutes, and I'm just gonna come in a little wet yet, so just sit here and tell each other stories about our decorative painting. <laughs> so I'm just kind of gonna keep going a little bit here. My awkward hand. Just trying to let it set up. We got a good breeze going here, so I'm just gonna go move along a little quicker. You got your pace. Just a little practice. You can kind of go in different directions. A little bit. All right. So then I'm going to come in and it pulls the paint away and gives me an automatic kind of distressing. It dries the paint um, and it compresses it. And you'll find out later when I show you how over here I did it. It's really soft and it's like a plaster. So I'm just coming in and then like I said, this is a little awkward, but you just kind of get in here. See how it changes and it rips the paint back a little and it's kind of pretty. I mean, if there's something you don't like, just kind of pounce it out. 
and wait for it to set up. It, it is something that I can't sit here on film and totally just sit here and wait. It's something that you practice, but see I'm gently going around and I'm manipulating my paint with a soft pressure and eventually it's going to start hardening up and I'll be able to really polish it. So we'll let ours set up for a few minutes and then we'll come back. All right, so we've got the, the wind kind of just naturally hitting on it. And why do I use a little trowel? It's because between the, it's the compressing of the paint that makes the finish unique. So this is how you're gonna set yourself apart. Um, and it takes, does it take a little bit more time? It takes a little bit more time, but we have four legs and a little bit around. So it's so worth it. And the subtleties you will see when you're in real life. So I'm just, see it's just setting up and I'm just gonna come and drive my little tool across. You can use a painter's putty knife and then you can see some of it kind of drying and then I come in the other direction. And I just kind of want to hit all of the surfaces with this little stainless steel trowel. The reason being is it will compress the, the milk paint it polishes it. You don't have to do any clear coat on it. This is the table legs. Nobody's really going to be doing much to these table legs. Um, it pulls the paint away. You can start seeing some of the whole violet in there. And it, you know, like I said, maybe it would chip, but I haven't had any chipping on this table yet. 